Code Agents Podcast. Welcome back, Lab Code Nation, to another episode of the Lab Code Agents Podcast. And today I am bringing on a guest who speaks our language. Uh, we're going to be talking to a realtor who has been in the business since 1988, but don't stop listening because of that. Just because he's old, totally joking, because he's been in the business, this guy has a ton of wisdom. And when you hear about what he has been doing with his career, he has a team of six agents intentionally doing well over 200 units per year, making more money than we are going to share. And, and I'm going to ask him some questions about how he got there. And oh, by the way, one of the, re one of the reasons and one of the strategies that he employs is Facebook groups. And we're going to talk about the why and the how and the what about how you can emulate exactly what Mr. Will Penny is doing. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks so much for having me, Jeff. This is a privilege. You've got a great uh, you've got a great reputation. I'm glad I'm here. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. So let's jump right in. Uh, let's tell our audience who the heck you are, where you're from, and how you kind of came up in the business. They know you've been in it since 88. So tell us the rest of the story. So in 88, uh, to the old thing, I'm 52. Um, so I got in when I was 19. Uh, most people that have been in the business as long as I have are in their 70s. So I'm 52. Um, I started the business, I was going to college and uh, that did not work out for me. Um, I started and then I got into real estate uh, thinking I'd get rich, all the wrong reasons because I was 19. Uh, I'm, from, I'm from England originally. I came over here when I was 10. Uh, we, we were supposed to come for three months and we ended up staying and I'm glad we did. I love this country. Um, where else can you uh, make the kind of money we do in real estate or mortgage in the on the planet you cannot so um i don't like to complain about the united states so anyway uh started a large um large national brand century 21 uh I was my nickname was flash in the pan penny no one would help me at 19 years old uh sold 17 houses my first year and then by the time i was 24 i made the century 21 centurion award which is 60 transactions and uh, they didn't call me flash in the pan penny anymore, but it was, I had to grind it out, man. I mean, I was calling for sale by owners, expireds, knocking on doors, cold call night. I did everything I possibly could. Um, so then I uh, left there, went to Remax for a minute. Then I came back and then my wife and I, uh, I met her as in real estate. She's actually the broker. So she's a pimp and I'm a hooker. Uh, <laughs> she's definitely the pimp. And uh, 2001, we started Penny Real Estate, an independent brokerage, and we've been independent ever since by design. And I spend every waking moment trying to stay relevant so that I don't wake up being like Al, the VCR repair guy. Uh, and you wonder why you're out of business. So I, um, 2003, I, I've had a showing agent for a long time. I was a solo agent for a long time, and I got a showing agent years ago, so I didn't have to show houses because I really was quite good about putting a box around my hours. Uh, so I worked Tuesdays and Thursday nights and then Saturday mornings because I had kids and I didn't want my wife to leave me um, or my kids to hate me. Well, they do anyway, but not because I wasn't around. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, so I was good at that, had the showing agent. Then I hired her full time in 2017. She's been with me 13 years. Uh, I made another great hire in 2013, brought on a listing manager. She got licensed. Uh, so three of my team members are salaried. I've got a closing coordinator. They're all licensed and they all sell houses too. So they're, they're making big money. They make a six figure income each themselves while also supporting me uh, and my, you know, in my real estate business. And then they also sell homes for themselves and I support them. So I've created a situation where they don't have any interest in going anywhere else to get a better commission split because they're salaried bonus W2, 401k paid vacation uh, agents. And then I've got two others that are just independent contractors. So there's uh, six of us total. Last year, we did just over 40 million. We did 46 million the year before. We were down a little bit last year. Um, and uh, here we are. Um, what, mar what market? Where are you? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you that. Um, I'm in uh, Stowe, Ohio, which is j Northeast Ohio, just South of Cleveland. Um, no cornfields here. It's a very diverse, very uh, suburban, uh, gr great economy, healthcare, government work and education are the three big job sectors. And, uh, 
it's a great place to be except for the cold winters. And that's why I go away. I go to Marco Island for uh, three months a year. Awesome. That does that. Marco Island does not suck. That's down in Florida. It does not suck. It's It's a nursing home, but I don't mind that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I tell you what, you, you, the funny thing is, is, you know, I made the joke about you being old. Um, we're both old by, by, in, well, actually we're both young. That's a, we're both old by our kids standards. We're both young by industry standards because the average age of a, of the real estate business, real estate and mortgage, I think it's five to, yeah, is that what it is? Yeah. yeah it's, and we're it's, the wrong gender. It's a 56 year old female. You're correct. You're correct. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty fascinating and it's even more fascinating that you've done it since you were 19, which, you know, we, you and I were talking about this off the air even is, is there's a lack of youth getting into our industry and like you mentioned that even that that generation is you know is going to have to step up their game and and be communicative and be accessible and things aren't just going to come to them and like you said you had to hustle and grind which i wanted to ask you now that i segued to that you know 17 transactions in your first year as a 19 year old where you know you probably couldn't grow facial hair and you looked probably like a puppy how did you even do that that's impressive and i think for a any youthful realtors listening and B for anybody with kids who they want to get into real estate. I'd like to know it. Maybe it's not relevant today, but what did you do to get to that? That's, that's impressive. So um, for full disclosure, I turned 19 December, got my license April, didn't sell my first house till September. I didn't know what a point, what it took me forever to understand. I had a real mind glitch around points. I couldn't get it closing costs. I was at a, an inner city century 21 office where the average sale price was 39, nine. And I ended up, um, bellying up to my mentor, Hank Thalros was the number two century 21 transaction agent in 1986 in the country, 380. I think I might have my numbers off a bit, 380 transactions in one year as a solo agent. So I, he was in, he was 70 then, um, so I asked him if I could help him. Uh, he was the only one that gave me any help cause he had a kid my age. He got married late. So he had a kid about a year older than me. So I drove his Cadillac to Danville, helped him go on listing appointments. I drive his car. When he goes on vacation, I would take his car, pick him up. I pretty much became his personal assistant. Um, and I went on listing appointments with him, buyer consults. He'd only show three homes. So I quickly learned how to be efficient because he was dude he's selling 30 homes a month ht there was a chalkboard ht took up the whole board and i so that's what i saw as being successful um even though i was told i would never make it i was driving my mom's 1986 bright red Renault encore uh, and i had no facial hair you are absolutely correct so sold my first house in september um, doing like floor calls, but I just was listening to him. So I just got really good at getting people in the office, uh, face-to-face meetings. And then it was, uh, then I would nail it. Then I started uh, calling for sale by owners and I was listing my second year. I sold 17. Well, my first full year when I was 20, I sold 17 homes. Um, and it was mainly, uh, almost all buyers as you can imagine, but then I started calling for sale by owners and I actually started getting successful. I go on a FISBO appointment and, and list the house. I don't know how I did. I can't do it now. That muscle so weak in me now. I don't know how I did it. I look back. I just, but I would leave with a listing. I don't know how I did it. Um, and I just got good at it and I got confidence fast. I sold 30 houses the following year. Cause I made century 21 masters award my second full year. And then I made Centurion in 95. So yeah, yeah, I was 25. So, and, and it was FISBOs, floor calls. Uh, I would do open houses for other people. I would just do anything I possibly could to get in front of people. And I have no idea, honestly, looking back. It's all about communication, caring, doing what you say you're gonna do, showing up on time. I'm talking to the young people right now. Mm-hmm. And um, just being accountable. And I was constantly questioned, how old are you? How many homes do you sell? How long you've been doing this? You can't be doing this that long. Other agents would give me a hard time. I just, and I just barreled through. What was your response to that? I've got a few follow-up questions, but what, because that's a good one is what do you say to that? What do you say when somebody says, how long have you been in the business? How old are you? How many homes have you sold? Back then, um, 
you had to present offers at the house with the listing agent. So every, any day I sold a house, I'd get home at 11 o'clock at night because you had to show the house, go back to the office or McDonald's, whatever, write the offer by hand, call the listing agent. I had a cell phone. It was 900 bucks a month. It was a bear because it was in my car. Very expensive. And then I, uh, you'd go to the house at like seven o'clock at night to present the offer after you wrote it, after they ate dinner, because um, you had to be convenient for them. Then they, you'd go over the offer, the listing agent kick you out, you go sit in your car, then they call you back in, they'd say, okay, well, we're gonna make a counter offer. So I'd use their home phone to call my buyer. I, told, I already told them to be sitting by their phone, give them the counter, they'd say yes. I'd drive to their house, get the initials, drive to my office, um, get make a copy, bring it back to them, then take it to the listing agent. I had, so that's the process back then. Um, so anyone who's complaining now, there get, get out of here. I mean, 60 homes doing it that way sucked. I mean, it was a lot of hours. I had Mildred Bittinger. I can say her name because she has to be dead. There's no way she's still alive. She was really, really old. She might have only been 50. No, she really looked old to me. <laughs> so anyway, um, she sat there in front of her seller and said, um, I've been doing this 40 years. How long have you been doing it? My response without thinking was, I've had a, I've had a library card for 10 years, but I haven't read every book. That's Ooh, shut okay. her down. Um, and the seller laughed. Uh, she was embarrassed. And I mean, I, I, I just started, when I started, once I started getting some traction selling houses, I would, I would just say like, well, I know I'm only 24, but or 23 or 22, but I sold 30 houses this year, you know? So I didn't really care what the realtors said. And I really got to, I kind of owned myself at a young age. You know, I got pretty confident without being cocky. Um, but I just, you know, I got re reference letters from all my clients. I had a little binder with reference letters and that was my social proof. Mm -hmm. You know, now I've got 750, almost 800 reviews online, but you know, but back then it was just reference letters. And I just kind of, I try to cater to my weaknesses, which were the experience and age. Yeah. I love it, man. I mean, that's, it's, uh, so did you script this? Like, did you pre-plan this or were you just winging it? Because do you, do you, everything do you, yeah. Everything was winging, but would you advise that? So if, you know, let's just say you, know, you have two kids that are in the low twenties and they come to you and say, dad, I want to become a realtor, but this is my, this is the objection that I, that I have been receiving. Are you going to advise your kids to wing it? Or are you going to advise your kids? Hey, let's talk through this. Let's talk through this and let's figure out the best way to respond to the agent, to that agent who sits there and tries to belittle you at the closing table or in the living room. Um, what are you going to help teach them what to say or how to respond, or are you going to advise somebody to just wing it? I think it would, well, you already know it'd be terrible advice to advise someone to wing it. Um, unless you're just trying to set them up so that they can kick themselves in the teeth, you know, but which is, I'd like to see my kids do that a little bit because they've had it really good, just like I'm sure your kids have. And, uh, and I'm not letting them work for me right now. I won't let them. My daughter's going to go to law school. Still won't let her come back then. We had a conversation about it last night. I want them to go out and get kicked in the head by somebody else. I don't want to ruin my relationship with them. My son, I told him at least five years. So he's working for a, a loan. He's a loan officer assistant for a guy who does 600 loans. So now after a year, he can see a 90 mile an hour ball, yeah. you know, because he, he, he knows way more than he ever would have. So I would... I think I would, I would definitely sit down and tell a, a young agent that you need to pick a couple of things, get really good at it. For sale by owners, or this, you, you, you get them the same way now as you did 30 years ago. It's the same way. It's, it's talking to them and, and, and figuring out what their pain is and trying to address that pain. Um, it's not that tough. Uh, I, would, uh, I would tell them to go uh, meet with builder reps at National Builders and want to be the guy that, or girl that sells the home, the resale homes for them. Uh, we've been, we've had a lot of success with that. I would try to get them to pick a couple things, really hone their skills and re get, really get good at it. But communication is the biggest thing for young agents. They need to stop texting, get on the phone. Nothing's changed. It's about relationships, trust, likability. That's what it, you already know that. Yeah. Well, and you know what? Use a skill that it, it, talking to the young agents, use the skill that you have that most of your predecessors do not, 
which is the, the comfortability of getting in front of a video camera. You yeah. have, you have that skill, take advantage of it. You start using it, communicate with people that way. Um, the one thing I will say that I, that I took from what you said was you found the most successful agent in your office. And maybe this wasn't intentional, but you didn't just go to him and say, let me pick your brain. You didn't say, can I sit down and take you out for a cup of coffee? You said, I don't know if you said this, but this is what you did. You became his driver. Like, that's really freaking smart. You took him to the airport when he was going on vacation. That's really smart. It's like, what can I do to bring you back? How can I help you? How can I just weave my way in? You know why I'm the podcast host of the Lab Code Agents podcast? Because I went to Tristan when I met him at an event and said, what can I do for you? Like, how can I help you? Actually, it was totally accidental, by the way. I, was, I said, can I do an event in St. Louis? And he's like, you know, we've been talking about doing events and, and you're the first one who actually came through. And then it just snowballed. All of a sudden, we're best friends and business partners, right? And um, that's what you did that I will applaud you for that I would tell any young person attached to a successful agent, don't ask them for advice. Ask them how you can bring them value. Wipe their damn ass. I, I'm, pardon, pardon the expression, but do something for them that makes them want to keep you around. Then you get to pick their brain, learn from them, and become as great or better than them. I mean, would you, would you agree with that? He, um, yeah, looking back, I, I became, I mean, I just said, listen, because uh, he had a, he had a bad limp and a cane, okay? Um, and so, but he was crushing it. I mean, the guy was just crushing it. So anyway, uh, I just said, hey, Hank, um, why don't you let me, I said, I, I really have a lot of respect for you. I would love to drive you to your appointments, makes you look good, and let me just come in, uh, listen to what you say. I'll just sit there quietly, you know, and I started going to lunch with him. Um, and then when he went on vacation, I, I again, I, I said, well, I tell you what, I really hate my mom's Renault Encore. If I take you to the airport, can I use your car while you're gone? And he said, yes. So I drive his Cadillac around for a week. Um, and then I'd pick him up at the airport, take him back to his house. And he, he just wanted to help me. That's what it was. And then the broker there, uh, Rudy, um, he saw what I was doing and he quickly he quickly got on board with helping me too, because he, he saw that I just wasn't, I was different. Yeah. They had their business meetings at eight o'clock on a Saturday morning. And I was, you know, when I turned 21 and I'm going out drinking on a Friday night, if I, I had to be in Akron at eight o'clock for that business meeting on Saturday morning, and then we do our tour after that on a nasty old school bus. So um, he, he, I had to be prompt and account, it, they just insisted. They were much older. I mean, they were in their 60s or 70s, you know, close to 70 then. So they just weren't going to put up with any garbage. Well, I'll tell you what, though. Say. That's timeless. I don't care how much the world evolves. Hard work <clears throat> and grinding and discipline, that's what it takes to be successful. And again, you and I were talking off air is the youth of America, the younger generations you know, there's there. I'm not going to label all of them that way. But those of you that are listening to this, if you're thinking to yourself, shit, you know, like, I don't want to do that. You're going to have to do that. I mean, you might get lucky, but by and large, the successful people in the world work their ass off, probably failed, probably got kicked in the teeth 10 million times. Right. Yeah, that, that's the reality. Listen to Will. He's going to make his kids go get kicked in the teeth because he knows that's what it's going to take because he got kicked in the teeth. Right. So. Um, and I don't want to stay on this topic forever, but I think it's a really powerful one that we don't talk about enough. And hopefully there's some, there's some listeners, either a youthful ones or guys our age or gals our age who have kids that say, my kids need to listen to this uh, because it doesn't matter what they're going into. This is powerful for them. So um, this is good, man. I, I really appreciate it. So let's fast forward. Let's fast forward to now where we are today, because obviously uh, there's a few things that really stand out to me. And, and one, I've, I, I've already asked you, but I'm going to ask you again. And that is, you know, you guys have built, you and your wife have built a really big business, uh, relatively speaking. And you could arguably say, okay, well, that's like, that's impressive. Like six people, uh, you're doing well over 200 transactions, 40 million in volume, and you've been in the business this long. Why are you stopping at six? Like, why aren't you, why don't you have a team of 15, 20, 50 um, why, what's your reasoning? Because I think that's it's very interesting. Clearly, I know this without knowing you, 
It's got to be intentional. Like, you know what you're doing. So, but I want to know why. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Uh, the reason is we have some massive teams in our area. We have a KW uh, team. They've got 92 agents on their team. Um, they've sold three and uh, they've sold 390 homes so far this year. Do the math on that, Jeff. 92 agents, huge fixed costs, massive lead generation bills, three or four or five closing coordinators. Um, I don't know. Uh, I just know there's a lot of these big teams that when you're dealing with clients and agents and everyone is, I mean, team leaders, everything's about commission split. What are you going to give me? Uh, it's become very nomadic. They're like gypsies. These teams are constantly churning their agents. Um, the agents that are selling 10 homes a year, they never develop the muscle to, uh, stay in touch with people, create relationships, build a database, build a sphere. A lot of the team leaders, not all of them, but a lot of them are, they, the only thing they have to offer is leads. They don't have a lot of structure in their team. Uh, there's not a lot that the agents gain from the relationship other than leads. Uh, and once they get to a point where they don't need the leads anymore, then they go, there's too many cheaper options. So I decided to keep good my like my listing manager is my wife's friend and um my friend i'm friends with her husband my showing agent same thing my listing coordinator is my one of my wife's best friends uh or my yeah my closing coordinator um the two other people uh are they're not going anywhere they're uh, so i wanted to keep it efficient and profitable and i don't have the personality I'm not a raw, raw person. So I don't have the personality to have, you know, 20 people and then having them constantly question how successful I am or, you know, they're going to look at my house or me going away. It, it's just going to build resentment. So I've just chosen to keep my team small with excellent people. Um, you know, they average 40 transactions each and they, they've got double duty. My showing agent sold almost 30 homes last year as well, her own. Plus she shows my clients homes, so I don't have to ever show houses. My listing manager, she goes out on all my listings after I get the paper signed and coordinates everything. My closing coordinator keeps in touch with my clients throughout the transaction on a pending sale. And then I'm the point of contract. We are contact, we run it like a doctor's office, just like a doctor's office. So I'm able to, I still sell about 80 homes a year, but I do it in about 30 hours a week. And then, you know, we, we do well over a million approaching, you know, over a million and a half in, in revenue, but I've got employees, yeah. three of them are employees yeah. and they like that and they're doing well and they get to be the best they can be. And I, they're recognized. Um, I just don't have the personality to grow because as an independent, I don't have anything to offer um, a lot of these agents that will eventually just say, well, I want to cap at 16,000. And I'm not going to have that conversation with them. So that's why. I love it. I love it. And then I think it's refreshing because you're right. I mean, we get caught up in the rat race that is real estate. And, and then all of a sudden, I'm not going to name any names. I, I can. I think that's why I'm a good host because I'm completely neutral. I'm a chameleon to real estate. I love everyone. Um, yeah, but you know, you, you get into it and you, you yeah, the, the KWs, the EXPs, the C, the C21. They're great companies, by the way. Correct. Yeah. Correct. But it's, but it's a race. It's, it's always who's going to bring the next shiny object or the next value. And, and although you did say it in the very beginning, you said that you stay relevant. You still bring value. And I can, I can resonate with that because I actually run a very big team. We have a team of over 110 people. And wow. It's my thought process is no different than yours. It's how can I bring my people so much value that when they're getting a conversation, when, when they're getting called, when they're getting messaged on LinkedIn, when the, the <clears throat> broker down the street's calling them, my people think to themselves, I'm never going to get everything that I have here, the support that I have here, the, 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 um, the shiny objects, right? The, the value, the, the strategies, those sorts of things. That's the way I'm always thinking. And I think you said that early on. So whether it's, six or well over a hundred, it's the same, the same thing applies, right? The same strategies apply in terms of being a leader. And if you 
I see this all the time in real estate because I deal with a lot of agents. And that is everybody wants to be in a leadership position. They want to be in a management position because it's like, for whatever reason, they think now I can just sit in a chair, work minimal hours and collect a paycheck. And that's where you get that churn because your employees are going to be watching you. You're the one leading by example. It doesn't matter what your title is. Arguably, in my opinion, when you have that title, you have to work harder. You have to yep. do more things, right? And I don't know, what's, what's your opinion on that? Because clearly you've done it very well. You've got a loyal team. I think there's a lot more realtors in the world that want to aspire to be what you are than what somebody like me is. Because with 110 people comes 110 headaches. I have a lot more headaches than you do. Well, you also have the skills to handle them that I don't. So, and I don't feel like developing those skills at 52 years old. I, I would rather help other agents outside of my company. Um, you know, I've got a Facebook group helping other agents. I've only got 122 agents in there, but they hang around and I tell them, they already know, I don't want to recruit them. I have no interest in having them work for me. None. I just want to help them. I've got, you know, so I, I just want to have a, a very profitable little brokerage. I'm staying independent by design because I'm in a sea of big names. And there's always going to be three, you know, we have 6,000 transactions in our little area. And I do 200 of them, you know, 300 of them would be great. So there's always going to be people that will want independence. You know, we bought a moving truck that we let our clients use for free. We started a full-blown staging company that our, you know, we let our clients use. My wife runs that. Um, you know, we have client events. And then, uh, which we're going to get into next, we have a, an amazing Facebook group for our clients, which is like a daily client event. And uh, we stay in touch with our people afterwards. And I'd like to talk about that group because it's amazing. And I think a lot of agents can benefit from it. Uh, 100%. That was my next segue. And, and so you have built a Facebook group of, I think I, I read over 800 members, right? And it's past clients. It's a way of staying in front of them without having to be probably slimy, without having to pay for ads, without having to buy a billboard. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about where, like, where the idea uh, came from. And then I've got some granular questions about the group. So, so just start, start from the beginning. So, um, the reason we sell so many houses, there's two reasons, um, relationships and social proof. Uh, so if you're an agent out there right now, you need to get reviews on Google. You need to become a GLS agent, a Google local services agent. It's free. Uh, throw a little bit of money at it. Uh, you need to get reviews there. Um, I've got 557 on Zillow. I'm not asking for any more because that, you know, that ship's run its course. Uh, they're going to shut that thing down within the next couple of years, I, once they become heavy into the business, they're not going to be promoting other agents in order if they want to get referral fees. Um, you know, that's their whole model. So I've, I've already got, I've copied all my reviews off of Zillow, got them all on an HTML page, and now I'm just going all in on, on Google. Okay. So that's the one thing I get Google business every week. I've got 150 reviews there. So that's one thing agents should do. Um, and then we do client events. We text and, and call our clients quarterly. Uh, I'll be sending out texts later on today, wishing people, my core advocates a uh, happy uh, July 4th. Uh, so we, we stay in touch. Tech, you could, texting from my phone. I go through the MLS you know, quarterly and just text everybody. How are you doing? Copy, paste, put their name in. But then I was thinking, so I'm, the reason I'm telling you this is because my business is relationship-based. Despite my type A, mil, you know, militant type personality. If a guy like me can have all of these people who love him, then most people can, because it's all about trust, you know? So, I mean, I'm relatively funny, but I'm, you know, I'm very straightforward, right? So it's a, anyway, my point is last year, I'm thinking, what can we do, especially with COVID? How can we stay in touch with people? This, it was freaking me out. I'm like, how can we, we couldn't do our client event. We had 173 people show up at our client event the year before at a bar. 173 on a Thursday, just to get two beer tickets and some crappy appetizers to see us, right? So I'm like, I started doing some research and another agent called me off of another podcast that I was on saying that he set up a Facebook group. I feel bad because I cut the conversation short to set up my own group. <laughs> but almost, I was like, 
oh man, that's great. And then I just quickly got off the phone call. He probably thinks I'm a jerk. I set up a group that afternoon, Penny Real Estate Friends and Family. I, I was all in on it because I, I th started thinking, I'm in groups. And then I, I watched The Social Dilemma. The, the three products that Facebook has, personal pages, business pages, and groups. Groups are conversations business, for conversations. Business pages are broadcasting, like a website. You have to pay for any traction on a business page. The, the average traction reach on a business page, according to the Google, is 0.62%, okay? 0.62%. That's why you, I've got 1,800 followers. Post anything, I get two likes. It's mm -hmm. the same two loan officers and a home inspector, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, because it's like a billboard facing away from the highway unless you pay to boost post. That's the only way you can get traction, boost post. And you're still not going to be able to maintain relationships with a business page. Uh, it's just broadcasting. Uh, personal pages, uh, the algorithm changed in 2018 to encourage relationships. That's what they want. That's how they keep you on the platform to show you more ads. They want relationships. They want, they've turned Facebook into a utility. It's not a gimmick anymore. It's a utility. Uh, every major corporation, every university in the United States uses Facebook groups to communicate with their students, their employees, um, their customers. They use Facebook groups. So I started thinking, I don't know any realtor with a private Facebook group. So, and I'm in groups. Every time someone posts to a group, uh, I see their post. So I'm like, holy moly. So it just was an epiphany for me. So I quickly got my team together. We had 100 people in there within a week. I started going all in on, on engaging content. I mean, I'm a, anything I do, I'm a freak about. And that I, I saw the value there. There's nothing else I can do in my career to stay in touch with someone or you daily. If I call you every day, you're going to call the cops. If I text you every day, you're going to block me. I can't email you every day. I can't show up every day. I can't put a gift on your front doorstep every day. I can't mail you every day. There's nothing I can do every day except a Facebook group. 70% of Americans are on Facebook. Actually, it's 80% of Americans between 30 and 70 are on Facebook, and almost 70% of them are on Facebook every day. Another statistic is seven out of 10, according to the NAR, seven out of 10 homeowners pick a, uh, hire the first realtor that they talk to, and 67% of home, homeowners rely on a personal referral before they list their house, okay? That's why we get a lot of listings. So I started the group. I got a bunch of content that I just started creating. It's none of it's real estate related. If you want to kill your group, post something about a house or a house sale or how good you are. Nobody cares. The posts mm -hmm. I see about, um, I just, we got 27 offers and sold it for a hundred grand over list. You've just sent two negative messages. One, you've told buyers don't bother buying a house right now. And you've told sellers they don't need you. So please stop. Just stop posting those posts because they don't, they're, all they are is for our own egos. So our group, it's all like, you know, what was the worst movie you ever saw? Uh, we'll show th four front doors. Which of these do you like best? We're getting 50 to 70 to 80 comment, comments on every post. We have a weekly uh, contest. We have caption this photos. It's every day, four to five days a week at around 2 p.m. We just put a post on there. I post it weeks in advance. Uh, Facebook has a scheduler um, right on their group. It's easy. So you can post everything several weeks in advance. And then I just encourage my team to engage with the members as they comment. People want recognition. They want to feel liked and included. And I have found in our group, COVID is, has drawn some very thick lines in the way humans interact. Mm -hmm. And Facebook, uh, the reason Facebook is advertising their groups on television now is because people have become very lonely. Mental health has become a serious problem because of this pandemic. People are using Facebook to stay in touch with people that they can't see otherwise. So having a group as a realtor or a loan officer to, to get your arms around your sphere of influence on a daily basis is probably one of the absolute best things you can do, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And it's so, not a gimmick. 
No, not at all. And, and again, you're, you're talking to the largest real estate Facebook group on the planet. So we, exactly. we, know, we, we know it well. But You've got what, like almost 200,000 members or something. Yeah, it, on the email list, yes. In the Facebook group, 140,000. Across all of our groups, yes. Yeah, it's, it really is. It really is. It's what Tristan and Nick built is, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, but, but you're right. And, and, I, and there's a couple of things I want to ask you. So, you know, one... I, I mentioned the lab coat agents, not because anybody should aspire for that. What they should aspire for is more what you've done, which is not the vanity of the number of followers. It's the quality of the follower uh, so that you're staying in front. I love what you said. Like, I can't call them every day. I can't text them every day. I can't email them every day. I can't door knock every day because you're going to get, you're going to call, they're going to call the cops, but you can <laughs> stay in front of their face this way. So number one, let's talk very technical. Um, there's, you have options when it comes to groups, you know, so it can be uh, private or it can be, you know, wide open, right? It, it can be public. That's <clears> number <throat> one. Number two, why did you choose a group over a page? Because I'm not talking a business page. I'm talking a page, you know, like, like as, as a creator, basically. So what are the answers to those questions? If you, if you will. Well, Facebook changed the algorithm for pages in 2018 so that if you, let's say you've got the maximum number of Facebook friends, 5,000, uh, only about 50 of those will ever see one of your posts. And the reason for that, Facebook got a lot of complaints and they were losing users because people get overwhelmed with the posts. You'd go on Facebook, you'd see bragging, political stuff, food, every. Talk, people talking about how great they're doing, which made you feel bad about yourself because your life sucks and theirs is artificially great on Facebook. And so Facebook made some serious changes in 2018 to the algorithm that basically makes it so that they only show your posts to people that they feel that you have a true relationship with. And by the way, their algorithms are bulletproof. You can't, you can't do anything to fight them. I mean, their algorithms are beyond anything we're capable of thinking of. It's beyond Facebook at this point, to be honest yeah, with you. Exactly. So if you're using a Facebook page to communicate with your friends about your real estate business, A, the posts that you're putting on there are repellent. If you're talking about home sales and that kind of stuff, it's generally uh, people don't they care for a minute, but then if that's all we post, they just get sick of it and they tune it out. Mm -hmm. And again, in this market, we're generally posting things about how great we're, you know, how many houses, how many showings we've had, how many offers we got, uh, how much over lists it sold. Everyone knows homes are selling for over list price right now. You just saying it is just confirming that they don't, they should just try it FISBO, right? So on a personal page, you can only get in front of, a handful of people, unless you work to, you, you'd have to make it your job to like everyone's post to gradually have the algorithm recognize that you just have a much larger group of people that you're actually friends with. The Facebook group is designed, like it, it was made by Facebook to have large numbers of people engaging about common interests and making sure that you see every one of their posts to keep you on the platform. Facebook does it to keep you on the platform so they can show you more ads. So that's what makes the group the only real tool on Facebook. And if any of the social media platforms, um, I mean, there's a lot of creative things to do, but if you just wanna use it as a social CRM, Facebook groups is the only one that you can do that with. Why private versus public? Because it, a couple of reasons. First of all, it makes it exclusive. And secondly, people tend to be more vocal when they know it's private. So people will comment more in a group. Look at your group. You get hundreds, 500, 600 comments, people saying some crazy things because they know it's inside the group. Right. They don't have to worry about their clients seeing it. They can bash their clients. They can. I mean, you see, I mean, not your group specifically. I'm just saying other groups I'm in. Realtors get on there and they 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 air their laundry about what they hate about this business right now. It's an epidemic. If, yeah. 100%. They would never do that. It gives them a place to vent. So I I respect it. You know, just to so they don't break down, especially if you're a solely buyer agent right now. I mean, it's uh, that's a tough world to be in. 
if you don't have listings and you're just running buyers around writing 10, 15 offers with no success and keeping their heads above water every day. So those group, the group has a benefit, but a private group enables people, it gives them confidence to speak up, which you want in a, in a, in, in a group that is meant to engage with your sphere of influence. You want them to speak up and feel comfortable. We actually now, after it got, once it got over 500, people are posting every day. So we actually have members asking for contractors, then other members who they don't know. My wife was telling me yesterday, you know, because people became low, so lonely uh, with, with uh, COVID, yeah. You know, we take it for granted as realtors and loan officers because we're talking to a bunch of different people every day. Most people, if, even if they have a regular job, they're working remotely at home and they're emailing or they're in a Zoom meeting. It's a very lonely place to be. You know, we take that for granted. So our group, we're having our 800 people are engaging with each other. You know, we've got a handful, probably 20 people that are just on it all day long. We've got one guy in particular. He's retired. Um, his spouse died. He comments on every post. Other people. Come, we my wife said last night that he actually looks at our group as it's part of his day. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not trying to make it bigger than it is, but. Facebook is part of people's day um, who if they're in a, a gardening group or a crochet group or a traveling group or a real estate group, they they've replaced face to face interaction with those types of virtual interactions. They just have. Yeah. Well, and the reality is it's, it's more convenient. You it's way more convenient. It's at their fingertips mm -hmm. and uh, and they come away not feeling as lonely for real. I love it. I I love it. I mean, well, obviously what you what you're doing is working very well. And now you're actually coaching and teaching agents to do this. And so I like to tell us a little bit about that, but also uh, tell us about the content, the content that you're creating that makes it engaging, because that is important. Like you've mentioned, if you're posting about your listing, you're talking about your awards, you're talking about the, the value, you know, how fast listings are selling, things like that. That's that's repellent. Right. So what is it that agents should be posting to attract more people and talk more specifically about what you're doing and how you're teaching people and social orchard and that, that sort of thing? So in terms of the content, um, we have some like I'll have a picture of four different swimming pools. I'll have a picture of four different uh, garage doors, front doors, windows, uh, painted black windows. What do you think of that? So there is a little bit of real estate, but it's it's Hague blue is the most Instagrammable color. What do you think about it as for a kitchen cabinet? We'll get 60 comments, yeah. right? Uh, we'll have, what, uh, if you had a theme song, what would it be? Uh, if your yesterday, uh, if your gangster name was the color of your shirt and the last thing you ate, what would it be? You know, yours would be black burger, you know, or whatever. We had 76 comments on that one yesterday. Hmm. But here's the key. I compare it to a client event. If you invited 100 or 200 people to a client event and they showed up and it cost you four or five grand, that's what it cost me. Would you just let them walk around or would you mingle with them? Would you engage with them? Would you go over and say, thanks for coming? A lot of agents, they, they have these groups and, one, and, and we're lazy, right? So you have to, you have to the, the, the posts are the bait people respond and then you have to engage with them, send them a private message, like their comments, respond back to their comments saying, oh my God, that's funny. You know, I did that yesterday. I, I take 10 to 15 minutes a night. I don't have Facebook on my phone. It, it angers me too much. I just can't deal with it. So, but I've got, I use it for the group. I'm a selfish pig. I use it for the group because I love the relationship that I have with my clients and the social CRM aspect of the group. So we invite all of our clients and we, we friend request them and invite them into the group. That's part of our business process now. So we engage with our members every day in the group. And that's the key because that encourages more people to, to comment. And the other, there's a social proof aspect to the uh, group. I know when I requested to be invited into your group and when I saw all of the comments and the the 50 posts, a day, I'm sure it's more than that, what, you know, 50 posts a day, the thousands and the hundred and some thousand members, that, that, throw, that adds legitimacy to your brand. You know, when people, little old penny real estate, a tiny blip of a company, um, 
people get invited into the group and they see that there's 800 other members and they see all the posts and the fun stuff. We have, you know, weekly contests, you know, caption this, the most liked post gets a $10 gift card. Um, we had one two weeks ago. Uh, we're looking for Google reviews. Now this shows how our group has transitioned from business to, to like relationships. I put a post up saying, we're trying to get more Google reviews. Um, Please post a five-star Google review for us, type done here, and then we're gonna throw all the names in a hat for three $100 gift cards. 27 Google reviews. Wow. Now, where else could you make a post to the, to the public and ask them to go send you a review? It wasn't about the $100 gift card. They wanted to help us out. And that right there showed me, they don't look at us as just their realtor anymore. They look at us as part of their they're one of their peeps for real. Yeah. So, and when people come into our group and they see their other members that I've had them say, Oh my God, well, I didn't know you had so many people in this group. So it, it creates legitimacy and it's social proof so that they, they want to help us. And, you know, the average person runs into three people a year who wants to move. I mean, the whole goal is to generate referrals from this group and it's working. Yeah. I just listed a house for the first guy I ever sold a house to. Uh, 1988, Steve Rodenbucker. I friend requested him in December, hadn't ever seen him on Facebook. He showed up on my suggested list, invited him into the group. Two months later, he hired me to list a house. He's been working with the same agent for the last seven years. He's a rehabber. I said, why'd you hire me, man? I was a bit apprehensive. And he goes, I, how could I not? I mean, you're the, you're the best. And it's all from, he doesn't, he hasn't talked to me in 27 years. Yeah. It's all from the group, the interaction in the group and his perception of it. That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. So tell us a little bit more about now you have taken, you know, th this brief time that you've been doing this and you're having a ton of success with it. <clears throat> Clearly it shows, by the way, it's black cliff bar. That's what, that was the last thing I ate. Black cliff um, bar. There you go. That's um, a bit edgy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, so you, you, you've, you've now essentially mastered it. Like everything you're saying is the thing that we preach. It's, it's brilliant. I love it. Uh, but now you're actually doing this for other real estate agents. Tell us right. about that. My business coach asked me to do a webinar for his clients. He's got 40 of them. They all make over half a million bucks a year. They're all legit realtors. And uh, he said, can you, I was excited about my group. He's my business coach. I talk to him every week. I've had him for uh, 13 years. Get a business coach. People, they're worth having if they're a good one. Uh, he was a top Remax agent in Pennsylvania. And I hired him in 08. But anyway, or yeah, 08. Anyway. Um, he said, will you do a webinar for my people to show them how to set up their own groups? I think this is phenomenal. Every realtor, if they've got, they should have a Facebook group. It's the new way to stay in touch with your database. You create your new database on Facebook. I'm like, okay. I said, but I'm not doing it for free. He goes, well, how, how much do you want? I'm like 50 bucks. I mean, I make very good money selling houses. I didn't think about, you know, uh, so anyway, he goes, he goes, you're an idiot. He goes, how about 300? I said, no one's going to pay $300. He had 14 of his agents sign up. So I had a four, $4,300 for one hour. I showed them all how to set up the group. At the end of it, six of them wanted me to give them my content. And I'm like, oh. And I thought, I was, I was down in Florida, had a few cores lights in me, called my son who was, uh, he's like, I said, Adam, we got to come up with a name for this thing. He, he said, social orchard. I'm like, holy God, that's a great name. Social, social media, social, you know, uh, sphere of influence, uh, and then orchard growing. I'm like, great. So I went on 48 hour logos, had a logo created, started a business. And um, I've now got uh, 34 realtors and loan officers um, that I train. We give them video training and they have turnkey groups, um, two, three, 400 members in their groups. None of them have dropped out. Um, am I allowed to say the price or not? Sure. I mean, sure. Uh, it's $89 for a solo agent, $149 for a team. And then loan officers, we've got several of those. They pay $399 a month. But the reason they do it is because now they're able to take control back with their realtors because they can give their realtors the content, help their realtors grow, grow their sphere of influence business. And then they give them the content. So if the agent doesn't give them loans, they stop the content. Uh, and then they have the realtors endorse them in the group once a month. Love it. 
So, um, and we offer a seven day free trial, all the content at socialorchard.com. And uh, it's been really fun for me because I'm helping a lot of agents. Our goal, we'll have a thousand agents within a year because so with all of the other things that you're, you're touting, if you also have a Facebook group and you put con consistently put content in there, which is easy to do, you can post it weeks in advance or have your admin do it. And you just treat it like a, a client event or a social event. And you actually engage with the people for 10 or 15 minutes a day. That's all it takes. Your referral business over time is going to skyrocket. And, it, and if you say how, then stop putting pumpkins in people's yards. Stop putting this, the American flag in people's yards for July 4th. Stop farming because all of that stuff, if you think that works, then how about staying in touch with people that are on the platform Facebook daily? How can it not be better? Uh -huh. You, Yeah, you're preaching to the choir, man. You know why I have 110 <clears throat> employees and growing? 100% attributed to video and social media, 100%. I couldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for the exponential potential growth of social media. And, and I, I love it, man. I think this is phenomenal. Socialorchard.com. Listen, if you're not doing this, if you don't have the capacity, if you sit there and ask the question, I don't know what to post every day. And the reality is, if you're going through some of these coaching platforms, I'm not going to name any names, but I know I've heard these coaches tell you, you should be posting all real estate content. They are 1 million percent wrong. You need to go learn from people that are doing it and doing it at, at, at a high level like Will. Uh, dude, this has been great, man. We're, we're going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to friend you on social media so we can stay in touch. Um, I'll invite you into my group and you can check it out. I love it, man. I love it. So again, check it out. Social Orchard. Go, go check out Will Penny. Obviously, he's doing things at a level that I think is, is probably much more uh, attainable for so many. Uh, because again, you know, I don't think a lot of people aspire to work necessarily harder, Will. And it seems to me like you figured it out. Like, I'm going to create a really good living for myself. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm going to have a very loyal team. And I'm going to have a great damn life. And that's what you've created. And I applaud you for that, man. I think this is Thanks, awesome. Thanks, man. Everyone's yeah. trying to get out of operations. <laughs> and some, you know, if you, if you pick the part of operations that you like, you can stay in it and, and not hand every, you know, hand everything away. I mean, there's some, you know, there's some, there's some pos positivity in staying a little bit in operations. Uh, I do it for selfish reasons because I just don't, if everyone leaves me, I can do everyone's job and still make, you know, half a million bucks or more a year. Right. So that's the reason I stay uh, in operations and I'll eventually, you know, hand, hand, I hand more and more of my business off to my team and they appreciate that. Um, so yeah, and I really, but I'm I'm very excited about uh, Social Orchard because now I'm helping these agents, and it's not a gimmick; it's real help, and they can get a free trial for you know, they don't they they can sign up and they get all the content for a month. It doesn't it won't hit their credit card for a week, and then they can bail out. But we haven't had anybody bail out yet because I'm a freak about making sure that they get their eighty nine dollars worth, whatever that looks like. Yeah, yeah that's amazing, man. This is real. This is great. I, I love. Thank you for sharing today. Uh, guys, go check it out, Social Orchard. Uh, this is obviously what he's doing. This isn't exactly rocket science, but just like we always say with video, we've been saying it for years. It's video is the future. Video is the future. Still, the adoption is minimal. There's so much opportunity. And with Facebook groups, there's no better way to stay front and center with your past clients, with your sphere of influence, and, and do it without being too salesy and in their face. So uh, we'll thank you. At all. Yeah, thank you. No, again I really time. appreciate the opportunity being on here, Jeff. I have a lot of respect for you. So well, thanks. Man. Thank you and uh, look forward to staying in touch. Yeah, you too.